Hello everyone and welcome back to 5014 Africa, the channel that helps you travel Africa. I'm Nick from Namibia and in this video I'll be discussing my six week itinerary that I did in Botswana, all the places I visited, a bit of information about each and the places that I've missed out on that I believe you should go to. This video will be very useful to people traveling to Botswana, especially if it's your first time. I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible, so let's get going. <music> First stop was the Khalakhadi Trans Frontier Park, about a thousand kilometers north of Cape Town. The park has borders with South Africa at the Tu Refiren Gate, Namibia at the Matamata Gate, and Botswana at the Mabua Sehube Gate in the east and Car Gate in the north. Important to remember if you're going to move from one country to another, you have to stay a minimum of two nights. And everything southwest of Norsop is operated by sand parks in South Africa and everything else by the Department of Wildlife in Botswana. I'll put links to both those in the description below. The park is excellent for lion, cheetah and leopard and I had an amazing stay there. What I missed out on because of COVID is the Botswana side of the park and I can definitely recommend doing the Nosep to Mabua gate in Botswana. I crossed into Botswana at the Kopfontein Tlokweng border post about 100 kilometers north of a small town called Zeres. Very easy procedure. Remember you'll need a PCR test that's under current conditions, not older than 72 hours. And at both border posts, you'll have to report to Port Health first. Additionally, on the Botswana side, you're going to have to do a rapid test, which is paid for by the Botswana government. And you'll have to purchase a vehicle permit. I paid about 150 pula for my 2000 Toyota Hilux. During my three visits to Botswana, I've never been asked for additional vehicle documentation. But remember, I'm Namibian, I'm local, I'm part of the Sadek region. So if you're from out of Africa or if you're renting a vehicle, make sure that you have the proper documentation. Especially if you're renting, inform the rental agency that you'll be crossing the border and ask them for the paperwork. I had a quick one day stop over in Gaborone just to do some shopping. Remember you don't have to over shops. There are very good shops available all over the country. I also filled up my tanks. Botswana has the cheapest fuel in the region so arrive with empty tanks and leave with full ones. I also purchased a sim card at one of the local malls. I paid 10 pula for the actual card and 220 pula for 12 gigs of data that lasted me for 30 days. You don't have to worry about the capital. They have excellent infrastructure. From there, I moved on to the Kama Rhino Sanctuary, which is about 330 kilometers from uh, the capital. Fuel is readily available along the way, and the last proper shop is in the village of Sarowe. The sanctuary is operated by a community trust, and bookings can be done directly on their website. I'll put a link in the description below. As the name suggests, it is a sanctuary for rhinos, and I saw 17 in two hours. So it's definitely a must-do destination if you're coming to Botswana. The biggest tip I can give you is try and arrive early, say by 12, 1 o'clock, and you'll have sufficient time to explore the entire park and only need to stay one night. Next up was camping at Kumaha in the western side of the Mahari Hari Pans National Park. It's about 380 kilometers away from the Kama Rhino Sanctuary. And alternatively from there, you can also go to Kuba Island via Leslekane or to the Central Kalari Game Reserve via Rakops. The last decent banks and shops is available in Leslekane and you'll find fuel up to the village of Rakops. The camp is situated on the banks of the Boteti River. So when it's in flood, you're going to have to use a ferry. The ferry is 150 pull up per vehicle and operated by the Boteti River Lodge 200 meters upstream. There's also a number which I'll put in the description below that you can call. The camp itself is operated by SKL Camps, link in the description below. And you can expect, if the river is flowing, large herds of animals, especially zebra, congregating around the river. There is a beautiful road that you can take that runs all along the Boteti River. My next stop was the south camp of the Naipan National Park, which is literally just across the road to the north from Kumaha. 35 kilometers of heavy sand driving gets you to the Puruhuru Gate, another 10 kilometers to the Naipan National Park Gate, and another 35 kilometers of heavy sand driving gets you to the South Camp. The sites are beautiful with massive shade trees and elephants randomly walk through the sites. The sites are operated by the Gomei Group, link in the description below. They also have a small little shop as well as Wi-Fi close to the camp. And if you ask them nicely, they'll even charge your laptop. The park only has one water hole during the winter, which makes for amazing animal sightings. 
Additionally, a visit to Bain's Boabobs is a must. I'm including Nata in this because it's strategically located on the road from Mahun and from there you can head north to Kazangula and Kasane or south to Francistown. It is about 160 kilometers from the Ngaipan National Park gate and halfway there you'll find the small village of Gweta where you'll find fuel, shops as well as the Gweta Lodge. From Gweta, during the dry season, you can drive across the Ntwetwe Pan to Kubo Island and the 90 kilometer route should take you about four to five hours. From Gweta to Nata, watch out, there's two sections where the road are extremely bad, so be aware of that. And in Nata, there's three preferred accommodation options. The Nata Lodge, the Bird Sanctuary, as well as Elephant Sands. I did not make it to Elephant Sands, but it comes highly recommended. Also in Nata, you'll find decent shops, banks, as well as fuel. Kazangula is about 300 kilometers north of Nata and from there you can cross into Zambia. During normal times this would be a very easy day trip to Big Falls and back. Kazangula has fuel, shops as well as banks. 10 kilometers from Kazangula you'll find Kasane to the west where like Kazangula you'll find banks, shops as well as fuel. The main attraction in Kasane is obviously the Chobe River where you can do boat trips, fishing, game and bird viewing and you should definitely find accommodation which faces the river because all of that also faces west and you'll get beautiful sunsets every night. The other main attraction is the gate to the Chobe National Park which is just down the road which makes Kasane the perfect base to do day trips in and out of the park. I had an excellent stay at the Chobe Safari Lodge in one of their safari rooms but I also checked out the campsites and they were excellent. The most asked question about Sabuti is how to get there from Kasane and honestly it's not that difficult. From Kasane take the tar road to the village of Kachikau. After Kachikau you'll find the dirt road, carry on straight with that. You'll get to a T-junction, turn right at the T-junction, you'll be on a very big wide road. Carry on with that road all the way down to your second T-junction. Turn left, there is a sign and seven kilometers down the road on your right will be the Goa gate, the gate to Savute. From the gate it's another 20 kilometers to Savute camp. The camp is operated by SKL Camps, link in the description below, are basic but there is hot water available at the Ablutions as well as a small but very expensive shop. I did not see any lions during my stay there but I did see some elephant, buffalo as well as more of the regulars and from asking my fellow travelers the best sightings were in the south towards Rhino Flay and Jackal Island. Quite a small village situated strategically between Savuti and Moremi and about 100 kilometers from Savuti itself. Getting there is quite easy from uh, Savuti itself and you'll eventually reach a split in the road. From there you'll need to decide are you going to take the Marsh Road or the Sandridge Road. I opted for the Sandridge and it lived up to its name. <laughs> Extremely sandy and possibly the worst road I found inside a national park in Botswana. From there you'll reach the Mababe Gate and from the gate it's only a few kilometers to the main road that takes you to the Kwai village. Most of the accommodation and camps are actually situated outside the village of Kwai on the various banks of the rivers and facilities vary from camp to camp so make sure before you book. Regardless it is stunningly beautiful and I had better animal sightings and game viewing than I actually did in Savute. Important for the traveler they have two small shops with the basics and unofficially fuel is available if you ask at the right place. I was told it is 500 pula for 25 liters. Also very important the north gate of Muremi is in the southern edge of the village. There is no better way to enter a national park than the long wooden bridge you drive over when entering the Moremi North Gate. Beautiful! <laughs> From the North Gate there's two roads, one leading to Nakanaka and the other to South Gate. Initially on the Nakanaka road you will drive along the Kwai River which means large accumulations of wildlife. Also you'll find the loop that goes to the Hippo Pools. If you have time it's a must stop and eventually will take you to the bridge. The biggest tip I can give you for Moremi because I experienced this myself is to make sure that all roads and bridges are accessible even during the dry season. I drove all the way to Nakanaka Naka and I could not access the route to Third Bridge meaning I had to drive all the way down to South Camp because it was already late in the afternoon and I only had one night's booking at Third Bridge I abandoned my plans and headed to Mau. But I can still tell you that the roads in Moremi are pretty good and the animal sightings had was amazing, especially in the areas around the North Gate and Kakanaka. 
From the north gate, the south gate is only 30 kilometers away and from there my owner is 100 kilometers. I was very lucky to spot a mother leopard and cub a few kilometers outside of south gate. The tar road restarts at the village of Shirobe and the 20 kilometers before that is extremely corrugated. Mahun can best be described as probably the tourist capital of Botswana. It is an excellent uh, entry point to the Okavango Delta. There is a lot of tourist activities available and accommodation is available on every street and corner. A lot of shops, uh, supermarkets, banks, fuels, off-road and camping stores, as well as mechanics and vehicle repair shops are available. Anything and everything you need as a tourist you will find in Mahun and I bet you'll be surprised by the size of it. From there I headed to the Tzodilo Hills, about 400 kilometers northwest of Mahun. Take the road to the west to Seitwa and from there head north. The last fuel will be available in the village of Gumare and also after that village is where you'll find the worst road in Botswana. I'm not exaggerating. Eventually you'll reach the village of Ngamasere. Uh, from there you'll leave the main road and the last 50 kilometers is actually a very good gravel road to Tzodilo Hills. The hills are amazing and if this is your type of thing I will definitely recommend it. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and hosts thousands, thousands of sand rock paintings. You'll have to pay 50 pula for entrance and a guided hike costs 120 pula per person. That is the only way you can explore the hills. You are not allowed to explore it on your own. From the hills I was on my way back, having two big stops left. From my own I went to Rakops, about 200 kilometers. And from Rakops it's another 45 kilometers to the Matswere Gate, the eastern access to the central Kalari game reserve. Just note that Rakops will be the last place you'll find fuel before reaching the reserve. Other gates to the reserve are the Tsao Gate in the northwest, the Kare Gate in the west, and you can also enter the park through the Kutsi Game Reserve in the south. There are several accommodation options available, including camps and lodges, which are managed by various operators, and I opted to camp at Deception, Piper, as well as Sunday. You're expected to be fully self-sufficient inside the park, including your water for washing. But the campsites are very basic with a bucket shower, non-flushing toilet, some of them have shade, and a place to bry. I did a lot of driving inside the park and seeing that it was the dry season, the roads were in very, very good condition. But I've been told that during the rainy season, it's a completely different story. So please be aware of that. The highlight of my stay was when a leopard walked into my camp in broad daylight while camping at uh, Piper Pan. My final stop was the very, very popular Kubo Island, which I accessed from the town of Leslakane. Remember what I said earlier, Leslakane is quite a big town, so they have proper shops, banks, fuel etc etc. The village of Matsumo is 45 kilometers from there and this is where the tar road stops. From there is another 45 kilometers to Kubo Island. During the dry season the roads are actually quite good and driving on the pan is spectacular. <laughs> spectacular. They've got 14 campsites each with a place to make fire and I've got shared non-flushing toilets which are scattered throughout the campsite. The island is not that big, very easy to hike, and they've got a few hills which provides for amazing views. I have been told, and this is probably the biggest tip I can give you, is to try and visit the island during full moon. My final activity in Botswana was driving from Kubo Island to Gweta via Ntwetwe Pan. From Kubo head northwest, don't worry there are many paths, but all of them eventually lead to the Tswakong Vetne Gate, which you need to pass through turn left and follow the veterinary gate all the way down. Eventually the road will turn away, you'll drive past the Goomba veterinary gate and then onto the pan. Like mentioned earlier, driving on the pans are spectacular, beautiful and it should be at the top of your Botswana to-do list. The last section of the 90 kilometer drive is passing through the villages followed by a bit of tricky navigation, probably the last 10 kilometers to get you to Gweta village. Remember to check the conditions of the pan before taking on this route. You can run into serious trouble very quickly if conditions on the pans are not suitable for driving. And that was my six weeks stay in Botswana. If you enjoyed that, please smash the like button. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the description below. And I also will, like I always do, add all our information in the description below. So go check that out. Please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And from a very cold and windy Cape Town, I'm Nick from Namibia and you'll be watching 5410 Africa.